Welcome back to Lim's Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to discuss uh, this technical indicator I've been working on like for years. And it's what gives me conviction. So let's get started. So there are different ways of using technical patterns, technical indicators. You got the famous, infamous, I should say, Tom Demark that's invented this complicated Demark indicator. And you can go look it up on your own because it's it's um, it's like a black box. It's kind of difficult to understand. Then you've got the equally complex candlesticks and Elliott waves, and then you've got all kinds of moving averages and bulging bands. But today we're going to talk about market breadth with a D. Basically, this is like the advances and versus declines, how the actual market's doing beneath the indexes. So there's different types of technical analysis i mentioned some but this is how they break them up and you could pause this video on your own and check them out but basically you've got classical types uh, the classical analysis that you see here on the left side and this is basically looking at chart patterns then you've got statistics like quants and that's pretty big and renaissance capital as you know is really big with that and then they've got sentiment analysis which is what i like and behavior analysis the two on the right, especially behavior, that's a more of a recent type of technical analysis. And I've talked, spoken about that earlier in some other videos. So today I'm going to discuss my LAMI, basically uh, LAMS indicator. And again, I'll go over a few of, of the intricacies about it. So you could get a, an idea of what it is before we talk about it and show you if it's working or not working, blah, blah, blah. So the first thing I want to mention is the definition. It's an index created to measure market breadth. So basically, instead of looking at the, at the ones you see on, on, uh, on TV, the breadth indicators, or even looking at the number of advances and declines, what I do is I actually create an index uh, analogous to the S&P and Dow Jones and and uh, NASDAQ, basically. So it's an index created out of the market breadth of the whole market. So it counts all the advances of the whole market, all of the declines. And then it uses a, a black box, so to speak, to create a percentage change. And with that percentage change, it, uh, it adds it onto the index. So in other words, if the index starts out at 100 and it uh, advances to declines of two to one, so there are a lot of advances, that index, index is going to move from 100 to like 101, something like that. So that's how it works. Uh, the frequency is daily. Uh, the bullish reading is if it diverges above the, the market indices, like the Dow Jones, and NASDAQ, and S&P. So even if, so for example, the Dow Jones and S&P are, are crashing, but the index is flat, that's a good sign. You want to see divergence rather than the absolute number of the index. Accuracy, I'm still evaluating it. It works most of the time. And I'm very strict with the way I measure the accuracy of these uh, indicators. I like to be uh, more conservative. That's why I'm saying it works most of the time. Work to re be uh, uh, redone or uh, more work that needs to be done is basically recalibrating. I would like to... Uh, make it work better. And one, one thing I've noticed, maybe it's one mistake I've made, is it tends to decline over time. Even if the market is flat, over time it tends to decline. So it should be more in line with the market. So I need to make it work a little better. And I consider this a long-term indicator. I've been working on it like forever and have been back testing it over 25 years. So let's get started. Now going forward, I'm going to quickly talk about some... Um, points in time when it was bullish or bearish and then you could stop the video if you'd like to take a closer analysis so let's get started the first one is one in which it did not work and that's the 1993 to 1994 period it said that the let's see what we got here yeah it's been declined here's a good example if you look at the this is i've got the dow jones and the Nasdaq. So the Dow Jones in green, it's always going to be in green, and the Nasdaq's always going to be in blue, and the indicator is going to be in red. So you can see the indicator was weak in 1993. It started going down 
while uh, the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq were flat. So it was indicating that the market would go down. So it didn't work that time. So that's one case where it did not work. Now let's look at where it's working. It worked in 1995. So there's a big bull market in 1995. And if you remember during this period before 1995, it was almost like a period that we have now in late 2018. In 1993, 94, maybe it was early. Maybe it was 93. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. It was basically a period of tighter liquidity. The Fed was tightening. And so the market was flat during that period. And the market didn't crash during that period like we are now is because number one, we didn't have a bubble before then. And number two, the tightening was nowhere near the tightening that we have now. Uh, so let's get back to uh, my indicator. So my indicator stopped going down and then it started increasing, going up with the market. So that's a good sign. It uh, confirmed that the bull market was real. And that's what I'm saying when I'm saying it worked. The next one is the 1997-98 bear market. It, uh, I'm saying here, if you look on the right side here on my, on my notes, it says did not confirm the market uptrend. So what it's saying is that it's not, remember I talked about earlier how it needs to confirm, like if it's not moving with the market, that's a bad thing. This is a good example where it was declining before the market declined. So that, that's, and you, I actually wrote a note there. It's in my second bullet. It says declined sharply beginning in June 98. And even before that, it didn't seem to be confirming the in indexes going up. So that's a good, that's what we want to see where it's not confirmed, whether it's up, where the market's going up or down. So this might be a little confusing because what we want to see is if, is if the index is not confirming what the, the, rel the bellwether indexes, like the Dow Jones is saying. Next one. Now here is an end example of where it did not confirm the NASDAQ rally of 1999. Also, the, notice that the Dow did not confirm it either. And, and if you look at my third point there, it says the Lamy indicate did not work unless you count the July 1999 signal as a sell. So what I'm saying here, here is the indicator went negative way before July 1999. So it depends how you want to read this. So you can say that it didn't work or it, it predicted the, the bear market too early. And I, to me, if the indicator is not given a sign, a signal within a few months, it's not working. That's why I said it, maybe it didn't work. But one thing I've noticed, this is the worst indicator, the, the red indicator. This is the worst signal it's ever given up or down in history of the 25 plus years I've done this. It's just amazing how this red indicator was going down way back in uh, the summer of 97 and it just kept declining until uh, 2001. That's incredible. It just shows you how much of a bubble there was in tech stocks. So you could say maybe it worked because it was given a, a red flag way back. Almost when you like when you see other red flags saying that there's something wrong, but nothing's happening yet with stocks. Next one. Here it worked really well. Beginning in uh, June of 2001, it was started outperforming. Even during the bear market, it was already outperforming. That's a good sign. So you could say that it was it was a buy back in June 2001, or you could say it was a buy later on. Uh, you know, when, when the market hit a double bottom. So the actual bottom of the market was in October 2002. So if your other readings are saying that the market looks good, and then this one already gave a bullish reading way back when, that's a good sign. So pause the video again and have a look at it, because I have a lot to talk about. Here I'm saying, the, the, if you look at my first point here, it did not indicate it did not confirm the bull market beginning in August 2007. So it kept declining rapidly. Oh, I already mentioned this. I'm sorry. This is the one I mentioned. No, no, I did not mention this. This is the this is the great financial crisis, and it's saying. Oh, now I get. It. I I had I was getting confused too. Basically, it's saying that that um. 
there was something wrong, like, like it did basically before the tech wreck. The indicator started declining in um, summer of 2007, and um, it did not confirm the bull market they were having in 2007. That's what I'm saying. So this is a case where there was a divergence. Sorry for the confusion. Confusion. Now, this one is pretty easy. This one is saying that the indicator did not confirm the March 2009 bottom. So basically, it not only did it diverge, it didn't even hit a bottom in 2009. So that's a really, really good sign. And just so you know, something we did discuss, I changed the index, the indicator index, in case you notice it looks different because I'm trying to see what the index was doing at the particular time. And that's why it looks, it may have, it has different values at different periods. But what, it doesn't matter what the values are. What matters is the divergence. And you could see, let's say you disagree with me, so you're saying, oh, it, it uh, did not confirm the bottom of, two, it, it didn't, um, it, it did better in the bottom of 2009. Even if you disagree with that, you have to agree that it bounced up quickly during the during that new bull market so that's what we're looking for we wanted to see it moving in line with the dow jones and the nasdaq and here it was clearly very strong this is one of the strongest signals that we've ever had and and here's some more signals i'm not going to go over each one but it, it confirmed the 2019 bull market and also the bull market during the the COVID crisis when the fed increased liquidity dramatically and you could see it confirmed the markets because it moved in line with the NASDAQ. It was very, index was very strong. The, the indicator in red was very strong. It backed up strongly with the market. And that's what we're looking for. And what's this? On the negative side, the indicator declining rapidly. This is now. This is the current period. I'm saying that it's declining with the market. But at least it's not declining more. Now, if you remember... What we've had now is, is a tech bubble, right? Because of the liquidity crisis. So this bubble is analogous to the bubble that we saw at the market top in 2000. So the good sign is that if, I, if you recall me saying earlier that this indicator in red had been declining like a year or two, it was declining rapidly before the tech wreck. At least we're not seeing that. It's declining with the market. But I still would like to see it um, outperform the market before it gives a strong bullish signal. So as you can see, it's moving. I'm, I'm going to repeat myself. It's moving in line with the Nasdaq. So we want to, what we want to see is that that red line either staying flat as the market's declining, or that red line's actually increasing rapidly. So that's not happening yet. So it's a little early. So in conclusion, I want you to use this technical indicator as a long-term guide. Let it confirm what you're already thinking from other indicators. And I already mentioned those other indicators in my videos. I, I recommend you look at those other videos on sentiment and on crypto and on liquidity. Because remember, that's the number one factor, liquidity and then sentiment. And then you want to know what's going on in, in crypto because the crypto indicators are very important because those are super long duration assets. And if they are getting a buy, uh, you could feel pretty confident that the market's going to be going up, but you want to see also what this indicator is doing. So the, I think the rule of the game, the key takeaway for today is not only number one that I just told you about, it's number two, patience. Bear markets, true bear markets, I'm not talking about V-shaped bear markets from the uh, COVID crisis and 19, the 1987 crash, I talk about normal bear markets, especially bear markets where there's a recession, which I think is what we're going to get. And those bear markets, you need to have patience, patience. These things take time, at least one year. So I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to us, ask us any questions, and send us a like. And tell your friends about us. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.